Hi friends, I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to discuss pressure and shear force in lecture 5 in our aerospace engineering course. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now we have seen that when we put an airfoil section in a flow, we get a flow pattern which is known as streamlines. So for example, if we were to put this airfoil in a smoke filled chamber and blow air on top of it, the smokes would follow some lines like this. And this has been experimentally observed for a long time. So these kind of lines of flow which are shown here where the fluid is taking this particular path, these are known as streamlines. And we will typically assume that you have steady flow which means that the flow has a clearly defined path along a streamline. So whenever we talk about steady flow, it means that the flow does not fluctuate with time. So essentially at different points of time, if we were to take snapshots of the flow, they would be similar. So if we now take a point on the streamline, we are going to have a element of fluid here and this element here is going to have certain values associated with it. So these are going to be P, V, Rho and T, which we have learned in our previous class as the flow field, that is the pressure, the velocity, the density and the temperature at this point. Now, the effect of this flow on top of the airfoil section is to generate two E forces. And these forces are known as pressure and shear force and we use the term P to denote pressure and we are going to use the Greek letter tau to denote the shear force and put a subscript W on that. So let's look at an airfoil section again. Like I mentioned before, there is a pressure and the shear force. The pressure acts normal to the surface of the airfoil. So if we look at the surface of the airfoil at any point, if we take the perpendicular to this point, then we are going to get the pressure in that direction. So all these lines of pressure, which I have made in blue, are essentially acting normal or perpendicular to the surface of the airfoil. Now the second type of force which is acting is the tangential component. And so these are the tangential forces which are acting here and of course these are all known as the shear force. So the air velocity is coming in this direction. There is going to be a total force which is going to be generated by the airfoil and a moment and so on. But if we look at it across the airfoil section then we see that there is a pressure distribution and then there is a shear force distribution along this airfoil section. So whatever be the complexity of the flow at the end of the flow period or when the flow is taking place, you are going to have these two forces which are going to act on the airfoil, pressure and shear force and nothing else. So now one of the main problems of aerodynamics is going to be to predict this surface pressure and shear stress distribution on the airfoil section. So this is required because once we can predict these pressures, we can do some integration and from that we can get the resultant load which is generated by the airfoil. So again, if we have the distribution around this airfoil section through integration, I can get forces which are normal to the airfoil, which are parallel to the airfoil, if there is any moment resulting on it and so on. Those are simply mathematical exercises. What you actually need to obtain from physics are the surface pressure and shear stress distribution. Either you need to obtain these from some equations and some mathematical modeling, or you can obtain them from experiments. So there are only two ways of getting about this problem. So again, this is a picture of this kind of airflow on top of an airfoil. You can clearly see the streamlines here. And you also know that a fluid is defined totally by using the flow field here. So we are talking of P, T, V and Rho. 
which are the pressure, temperature, velocity, and density. And if we take a two-dimensional flow field, then these are going to be functions of x and y here. So we are assuming here that it is an infinite wing. That means this wing goes to plus and minus infinity here, in which case we can just consider this to be an air foil section. So this is often an approximation which is made to get some simplicity in terms of the equations and so on. So one of the things is that shear forces are produced by friction. Now, whatever the level of smoothness you create in the airfoil, and generally when you see any wing section or any rotor blade section, you will find that the machining and all is done to make this as smooth as possible. There is still going to be friction produced because all surfaces which are real will produce friction and therefore the shear stress is produced by this friction. Now there are certain cases where people neglect friction and that is known as frictionless flow. So in certain cases if you only consider pressure, you do not consider any shear force then you will have frictionless situation happening there. So this was a brief outline about the basic nature of the fluid flow which takes place in an airfoil section or in any section. Essentially the flow takes place and it produces a pressure and a shear force and from these you get the resultant forces which we are going to discuss later in this course. Now I'm going to put some links in the description box to YouTube videos for airflow around airfoils and from these you can see the streamlines and so on. So that will help you get a good pictorial idea about what we are talking about today. So I'll end this video here and I will see you in my next video where we are going to discuss about all the equations in one shot. See you then.